Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at a bond regime between interest payments. First we're going to account for the accrued interest at the redemption date of the bond, and then second we're going to record the bond at its retire retirement or its redemption date. Now let's look at our example here. We have a hundred thousand uh, dollar face value of a bond. It has a five-year term that would be with ten semi-annual payments and then the stated rate of interest is 9% or 4.5% per year and then the market rate of interest is 8% or 4% per year. Now that would be a bond issued at a premium. Now next here we're going to look at the redemption date of the bond and that would be 11.1 x2. And our last semi-annual payment on that bond was 7.1 x2. So let's go up here and look at our timeline for that. So we have a 7-1-X-2 date here at the beginning, and then we have 11-1-X-2 here, and that represents four months. Now, uh, the, our payment, interest payment here, would be based on the $4,500 uh, semi-annual payment that we uh, pay on the stated rate of interest, or 4.5% times the $100,000 face value of the bond, and then we take 4 six of that, or 4 months of that, and we get $3,000. Now we have to also calculate our market rate of interest for that period. Now that was a 4% semi-annual interest rate, and when we take 4 six of that, or 4 months of that, we get 2.66% of our market rate of interest. Okay, let's make our calculations on this bond using this amortization schedule. And here we're going to use the effective interest rate method. So our carrying value here on 7.1x2 is $103,052 on that bond. And then going down here at a redemption date on 11.1x2, our interest payment or interest payable to our bondholders is $3,000. So we have to calculate our interest expense here for that period. And we do that by taking the beginning carrying value of $103,052 times the uh, market rate of interest for that period or 2.66% and we get an interest expense here of $2,747. Now that's what we recognize as our expense on the income statement. Now we subtract that from our interest payment, our interest payable here of $3,000, and we get an amortization of that bond premium of $253. So we take this amortization amount here and subtract it here from the beginning carrying value of $103,052, and we get our carrying value here at the redemption date of that bond on 11.1x2 of $102,799. So just looking at our debits and credits here, we have a debit to interest expense of $2,747 and also a debit here to this bond premium uh, amortization here of $253. And then we have a credit balance here of $3,000 on our bonds payable amount. Okay, here are the journal entries for this bond redemption. I have the asset and liability account shown over here on the balance sheet and then the interest expense and any gain or loss on that bond redemption as part of net income on the income statement shown here. So let's first bring this accrued interest up to date. So we debit the premium to bonds payable for that interest expense uh, amortization here of $253. And then we go and we increase our interest expense or debit it for $2,747 here. And then our credit balance here would be the interest payable to our bondholders of $3,000. Now the next thing we have to do is to uh, calculate our gain or loss on that bond. So we take the updated carrying value minus the cash paid to determine any gain or loss. So our updated carrying value in this case would be the $100,000 here in bonds payable um, plus the uh, a balance here in the premium to bonds payable and that was twenty seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. So our updated uh, carrying value here was one hundred and two thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars. Now for this example we paid cash here to redeem that bond at a hundred and four thousand dollars so there we would credit our cash for a hundred four thousand dollars. So the difference here would be twelve hundred and one dollars and now that's a loss here so we debit or increase our our loss here for twelve hundred and one dollars now our closing entries here of course would be uh, to debit the bonds payable for a hundred thousand dollars and then uh, remove this bonds payable premium amount here 
for $2,799 and debit that. And also debit or interest payable here for $3,000. Now our cash account here would be credited to reduce for that $3,000 of the interest payable and also the $104,100 for the uh, uh, cash that we paid to retire that bond. So these are the uh, journal entries that we'd use for this uh, bond here that we redeemed between interest dates. Okay, let's summarize some key points for this bond redemption. The interest expense that we recognize here is based on the beginning carrying value of the bond times the market rate of interest for that period. Now when we look here at our premium to bonds payable, which is a valuation account to bonds payable, that amortized amount here is the amount that would be at the redemption date of that bond or when that bond is retired. And that includes the uh, interest expense amortized for that period here. Now going up here and looking at our gain or loss, uh, we would we always use here the updated carrying value of the uh, bond and in this case it would be the bonds payable amount here of $100,000 plus the $2,799 here in the bonds premium. And then we subtract out the cash that we paid to retire uh, that bond here. And then the difference here between the updated carrying value and the cash paid would be any gain or loss. And in this case, uh, we paid less cash here than our carrying value. So we had a gain. In this case, it was $1,799. So we credit the gain here for $1,799. Now remember here, we have an interest payable amount. That's that interest payment that we have to pay for our bondholders here on that accrued interest uh, for that period. And then here in our cash account, we have to recognize or reduce our cash for that interest payable amount plus the cash that we paid to retire that bond. So those are the key points here in a bond redemption.